Cleopatra VII was the daughter of Ptolemy XII or its was the queen of Egypt from 51 to 30 BC. She was the final monarch of the Ptolemaic kingdom and reigned during a tumultuous period in its history. Cleopatra belonged to the Ptolemaic dynasty, stemming from its founding father Ptolemy Isota, who served as a Macedonian Greek military leader and accompanied Alexander the Great. The death of Cleopatra signified the conclusion of the Hellenistic period in the Mediterranean and a shift to Roman rule. Egypt became a province of the Roman Empire, thus concluding an era that stretched back to Alexander's reign. Despite Koine Greek being her native language, she was the only Ptolemaic ruler to be fluent in Egyptian too. She took the time and effort to learn and use it proficiently. Cleopatra VII Philopater is known to be the only queen of Egypt. She was the last ruler from the Ptolemaic kingdom that held power in this country. Her full name was Cleopatra VII Philopater, and she has gone down in history for her influential reign. The most renowned partly due to her affairs with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, as well as her fateful death. She gave birth to fraternal twins with Mark Antony. Historians describe her as a red-haired, white with light eyes. There is some debate among historians about Cleopatra's appearance, as there are few reliable contemporary descriptions of her that have survived to the present day. However, it is generally believed that Cleopatra was of Greek and Macedonian descent, and would have had a similar appearance to other people of that background during the time period. It is possible that she had fair skin and light eyes, although this cannot be confirmed with certainty. Similarly, while some ancient sources describe her as having red hair, others suggest that she had dark hair or wore wigs of various colors. Ultimately, it is difficult to say for certain what Cleopatra looked like, and it is important to approach any descriptions of her appearance with a critical eye and understanding of the limitations of historical evidence. It is true that Cleopatra died by suicide. Yes, but the reasons for her decision are more complex than just fear of being killed by the Romans. After the death of her lover Mark Antony and the defeat of their forces in the Battle of Actium, Cleopatra realized that she would be taken captive by the Roman general Octavian, later known as Augustus, and paraded through Rome in a humiliating triumph. She also feared that her children with Antony would be killed or enslaved by the Romans. Therefore, Cleopatra decided to take her own life by allowing herself to be bitten by a venomous snake, according to most accounts. It is not true that fallen leaders were routinely killed in the Colosseum by being ripped apart by lions and tigers. The Colosseum was primarily used for gladiatorial contests and other forms of public entertainment, although some executions of criminals and prisoners of war did take place there. The practice of throwing Christians to the lions in the Colosseum did occur during the reign of some Roman emperors. But there is no evidence that this was a common punishment for political or military leaders. Cleopatra did not have a child with Julius Caesar when she found out about Mark Antony's death. Cleopatra and Julius Caesar did have a son together named Caesarian, but he was born in 47 BC, several years before Mark Antony's death. By the time of Mark Antony's death in 30 BC, Caesarian was a teenager and was not present with Cleopatra at the time. After Julius Caesar's assassination in 44 BC, Cleopatra aligned herself with Mark Antony and became his lover and ally in his struggle for power with Octavian, later known as Augustus. Mark Antony and Cleopatra had three children together, twins named Cleopatra Selene II and Alexander Helius, and a son named Ptolemy Philadelphus. Was the reason she was smuggled into Rome in a carpet as she wanted Julius to legitimize their son? The story that Cleopatra was smuggled into Rome in a carpet to meet Julius Caesar and legitimize their son Caesarian is a popular myth, but it is not true. This story was first recorded by the Roman historian Plutarch, who lived several centuries after the events took place. Plutarch's account was based on hearsay and was likely exaggerated or invented to create a more dramatic narrative. In reality, Cleopatra did visit Rome twice during her lifetime, but there is no evidence to suggest that she was smuggled into the city in a carpet. When she first met Julius Caesar in 48 BC, she was already the queen of Egypt and had a diplomatic entourage with her. 
It is also unlikely that Caesar would have agreed to meet with Cleopatra in such a clandestine and undignified manner, as he was known for his grandeur and public displays of power. Who commissioned a bust made of gold? The gold bust of Cleopatra is believed to have been commissioned by Mark Antony, her lover and political ally. According to historical accounts, Antony was enamored with Cleopatra and sought to honor her with a grandiose gift. The bust was said to have been created by the Greek sculptor, Apollodoros of Damascus, who was renowned for his work in the Roman Empire. However, the fate of the bust is unknown, it may have been destroyed or lost over time. Despite this, the image of Cleopatra as an alluring and powerful ruler has persisted in popular culture, and her legacy continues to inspire fascination and intrigue today. How educated was Cleopatra? It is widely believed that Cleopatra was a highly educated and multilingual queen who could speak as many as nine or ten languages, including Greek, Latin, Egyptian, and Hebrew. This is supported by accounts from ancient historians, who described her as a skilled orator and diplomat who was able to communicate effectively with people from different cultures and backgrounds. Cleopatra is also said to have been well-versed in philosophy, mathematics, and astronomy, and was known for her intellectual curiosity and love of learning. Her impressive linguistic abilities and broad knowledge base were likely important assets in her role as a leader allowing her to navigate the complex political landscape of the ancient Mediterranean world and forge alliances with powerful rulers like Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. How did she meet Mark Antony? Cleopatra first met Mark Antony in 41 BC, shortly after the assassination of Julius Caesar. At the time, Antony was one of the most powerful men in Rome and was vying for control of the Roman Empire with Octavian, later known as Emperor Augustus. Seeking to secure her own position and protect her kingdom from Roman annexation, Cleopatra traveled to Tarsus in modern-day Turkey to meet with Antony and negotiate an alliance. According to historical accounts, Cleopatra arrived in Tarsus on a lavish barge, dressed as the goddess Aphrodite and surrounded by attendants. Her beauty, intelligence, and charm reportedly captivated Antony, and the two quickly became lovers. Their relationship was politically advantageous for both of them, as it enabled Cleopatra to gain support for her claim to the Egyptian throne and gave Antony access to Egyptian resources and troops. Despite the challenges they face, including the disapproval of Roman society and the military threat posed by Octavian, Cleopatra and Antony remained together for several years, during which time they had three children together. However, their alliance was ultimately doomed by their political ambitions and the power struggles of the time. In 31 BC, Antony and Cleopatra faced off against Octavian's forces in the naval battle of Actium, which they lost decisively. Following their defeat, they fled to Egypt, where they both committed suicide the following year. Despite the tragic end to their relationship, the romance between Antony and Cleopatra has remained a popular subject in literature, art, and popular culture for centuries, and continues to captivate people's imaginations to this day. How many marriages did she have? Cleopatra VII of Egypt had a complicated romantic life and is believed to have had relationships with several powerful men of her time. However, the exact number of her marriages is a matter of historical debate. Cleopatra's first husband was likely her younger brother, Ptolemy XIII, whom she married when she was around 18 years old. After a power struggle between them, Cleopatra became the sole ruler of Egypt and married her other brother, Ptolemy XIV, in a political move to secure her hold on the throne. Some historians believe that Cleopatra may have had other marriages or romantic relationships, including with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, but the details are uncertain. It's important to note that ancient Egyptian royal marriages were often more symbolic than romantic, and they were used as a way to create political alliances and secure power. Therefore, the number of Cleopatra's marriages may not be as significant as her strategic partnerships and alliances with powerful figures of her time. Top questions people ask about Cleopatra VII of Egypt, along with brief answers. What was Cleopatra's nationality? 
Cleopatra VII was of Greek and Macedonian ancestry, and she was a member of the Ptolemaic dynasty, which was of Greek origin but ruled Egypt. Who was Cleopatra's husband? Cleopatra had multiple husbands, including her younger brother, Ptolemy XIII, and her other brother, Ptolemy XIV. She also had a romantic relationship with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. How did Cleopatra die? Cleopatra VII died by suicide, allegedly by allowing herself to be bitten by an asp, a venomous snake. She did this after her ally and lover Mark Antony was defeated in battle by his rival, Octavian, who later became Emperor Augustus. What did Cleopatra look like? There are no contemporary portraits of Cleopatra VII that have survived, so her appearance is a matter of speculation. Some descriptions from ancient sources suggest that she was physically attractive and charming, with a regal bearing. What did Cleopatra do for Egypt? Cleopatra VII was a skilled politician and strategist who managed to maintain Egypt's independence and prosperity in the face of internal and external threats. She also promoted the arts and sciences, and she was known for her patronage of scholars and intellectuals. Was Cleopatra really beautiful? Cleopatra's beauty is a matter of historical debate, as there are no surviving contemporary depictions of her. However, she was known for her charisma, intelligence, and political savvy, which may have contributed to her legendary status. How old was Cleopatra when she died? Cleopatra VII died at the age of 39 or 40, depending on the historical sources. Her exact birth date is not known with certainty. Did Cleopatra speak Egyptian? It's not clear whether Cleopatra VII spoke Egyptian, as the language of the Egyptian royal court at the time was Greek. However, she was likely familiar with Egyptian culture and religion, and she was known for adopting some Egyptian customs and symbols in her rule. What was Cleopatra's role in Julius Caesar's assassination? There is no evidence to suggest that Cleopatra had any direct involvement in Julius Caesar's assassination. However, she was in Rome at the time and may have been aware of the plot. What was Cleopatra's relationship with Mark Antony like? Cleopatra and Mark Antony were allies and lovers who had a complex and tumultuous relationship. They had three children together and formed a political and military alliance against Octavian, but they were eventually defeated in battle and committed suicide together. Please subscribe and you will be part of the growth of my channel. The elusive origins and childhood of Queen Cleopatra Queen Cleopatra has been shrouded in mystery for centuries. Her life has been the subject of many books and movies. But the details of her childhood and origins remain elusive. We will also examine how much of these theories are based on fact or fiction. By delving into this ancient history, we can gain a better understanding of one of history's most famous queens. Cleopatra was of Greek heritage, belonging to the Ptolemaic dynasty which reigned over Egypt following the passing of Alexander the Great. Ptolemy XII Aulets, her father, was renowned for his luxurious living and poor financial planning. During her upbringing, Cleopatra was exposed to a range of concepts such as mathematics, philosophy and languages. This provided her with an immense foundation from which she could draw knowledge from. She also learned about Egyptian culture and religion, which helped her to gain the support of the Egyptian people later in life. Despite her privileged upbringing, Cleopatra faced many challenges, including the exile of her father and the political turmoil that followed. Her childhood experiences likely shaped her determination and resilience, which would serve her well as she navigated the complex political landscape of ancient Egypt. Did she kill her brothers? There is no concrete evidence to suggest that Cleopatra VII of Egypt killed her brothers, Ptolemy XIII and Ptolemy XIV. However, there are accounts in ancient sources that describe a power struggle between Cleopatra and her brothers, and it's possible that she played a role in their deaths. According to some historical accounts, Ptolemy XIII initially ruled Egypt with Cleopatra, but they soon became embroiled in a power struggle. 
Cleopatra was eventually forced to flee Egypt, but she returned with the help of Julius Caesar and defeated Ptolemy's forces in battle. Ptolemy XIII drowned in the Nile during the conflict, although it's not clear whether this was intentional or accidental. After Ptolemy XIII's death, Cleopatra married her other brother, Ptolemy XIV, who was younger and less assertive. Ptolemy XIV died a few years later, possibly of natural causes, although some accounts suggest that Cleopatra may have had a hand in his death. It's worth noting that ancient Egyptian royal families often engaged in political intrigue and violence to secure their power. The exact details of Cleopatra's role in her brother's deaths are difficult to determine with certainty. What is the untrue innuendo or gossip about her? Cleopatra VII of Egypt was a legendary figure in history, and over the centuries, many rumors, myths, and falsehoods have been spread about her. Here are some of the most common untrue gossips about her. Cleopatra was extremely promiscuous. There is no evidence to support the idea that Cleopatra was particularly promiscuous. While she did have romantic relationships with several powerful men, including Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, these relationships were likely motivated by political and strategic considerations as much as personal attraction. Was Cleopatra a seductress who used her beauty to manipulate men? Similar to the previous point, there is little evidence to suggest that Cleopatra relied solely on her physical appearance to influence men. She was known for her intelligence, charisma, and political acumen, and she was respected by many of her contemporaries as a skilled ruler and strategist. Was Cleopatra an Egyptian? While Cleopatra was the last pharaoh of Egypt and ruled the country for many years, she was not ethnically Egyptian. She was of Greek and Macedonian ancestry, and she was a member of the Ptolemaic dynasty, which was of Greek origin but ruled Egypt. Was Cleopatra a witch who used magic to control her enemy? There is no evidence to support the idea that Cleopatra was a practitioner of magic or used it to control her enemies. This idea may have been spread by her enemies in an attempt to discredit her and undermine her power. Cleopatra committed suicide because she was heartbroken over Mark Antony's death. While Cleopatra and Mark Antony were lovers and allies, it's unlikely that Cleopatra's suicide was solely motivated by her grief over his death. She likely saw suicide as a way to preserve her dignity and avoid being taken captive by Octavian, who later became Emperor Augustus, after her defeat in battle. Did she have any surviving children? Yes, Cleopatra VII of Egypt had four children, three of whom survived to adulthood. Her first child, a son named Caesarion, was born in 47 BC and was widely believed to be the son of Julius Caesar. After Caesar's assassination, Cleopatra returned to Egypt with Caesarion and ruled jointly with him as her co-regent. Cleopatra later had three children with Mark Antony, two sons named Alexander Helios and Ptolemy Philadelphus, and a daughter named Cleopatra Selene II. All three children survived to adulthood and were raised by Cleopatra after Mark Antony's death. After the defeat of Cleopatra and Mark Antony in the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, their children were taken captive by Octavian, later Emperor Augustus. Caesarion was executed, but Alexander Helios, Ptolemy Philadelphus and Cleopatra Selene II were spared, and sent to live in Rome, where they were raised by Octavia, Mark Antony's former wife. Did Cleopatra had any sisters? Yes, Cleopatra VII of Egypt had at least two sisters. The first was named Berenice IV, who briefly ruled Egypt as queen in between Cleopatra's first and second reigns. Berenice IV was the daughter of Cleopatra's father, Ptolemy XII Aulix, and a different wife than Cleopatra's mother. The second sister was named Arsinoe IV, and she was the younger half-sister of Cleopatra. After Ptolemy XII's death, a power struggle ensued between Cleopatra and Arsinoe IV over the throne of Egypt. Arsinoe IV was briefly able to assert her claim to the throne with the help of the Roman general Gnaeus Pompey. But she was eventually defeated and captured by Julius Caesar. 
Caesar spared Arsinoe Four's life and allowed her to live in exile in Rome. But she was later executed on the orders of Cleopatra and Mark Antony, who saw her as a potential rival to their own power. Are there any known descendants? It is not definitively known whether there are any direct descendants of Cleopatra VII of Egypt. There are some claims of descent from her through her daughter, Cleopatra Selene II, who married Juba II of Numidia, a client king of Rome. However, these claims are difficult to verify and are subject to debate among historians. There have been some efforts to try to trace Cleopatra's genetic lineage through modern DNA analysis. But these attempts have been largely unsuccessful due to the limited availability of genetic material from her or her known relatives. While there is some speculation about the possibility of direct descendants of Cleopatra, there is no concrete evidence to support these claims at this time. The enigmatic Cleopatra, master manipulator or misunderstood queen. Was Cleopatra a master manipulator? There is much debate among historians about whether Cleopatra VII of Egypt was a master manipulator or not. Some argue that she was a skilled politician and strategist, while others believe that her reputation as a manipulator has been exaggerated over time. Here are a few facts about Cleopatra that may shed light on her character. Cleopatra was the last pharaoh of ancient Egypt and ruled from 51 BC to 30 BC. She was known for her intellect and spoke several languages, including Greek, Egyptian and Latin. Cleopatra was a skilled diplomat and formed political alliances with powerful men, including Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. She was also known for her beauty and charisma, which she used to her advantage in her political dealings. Cleopatra was accused of murdering her siblings in order to secure her place on the throne, although some historians dispute this claim. She was also accused of using her romantic relationships with Caesar and Antony to gain political power, although her true intentions are still debated. Based on these facts, it is clear that Cleopatra was a highly intelligent and politically savvy leader, who was skilled at forming alliances and navigating the complex political landscape of her time. However, whether she was a manipulator or not is open to interpretation. Some argue that her actions were necessary to protect her kingdom and secure her position as pharaoh. While others view her as a ruthless and ambitious leader who was willing to do whatever it took to maintain her power. Cleopatra's true character and motives may never be fully understood, but her legacy is one of the most enigmatic. and fascinating figures in history will continue to fascinate us for centuries to come. Was she liked and loved by her country Egypt? The historical record suggests that Cleopatra VII of Egypt was a polarizing figure in her own time, and that her popularity among the people of Egypt was mixed. On the one hand, Cleopatra was seen by some as a symbol of national pride and resistance against foreign domination. She portrayed herself as the embodiment of the goddess Isis and was known for her extravagant displays of wealth and power, which some Egyptians admired. On the other hand, Cleopatra was also viewed by many as a foreign interloper who was more interested in preserving her own power than in serving the interests of her people. She was criticized for her alliance with Rome and her relationships with powerful Roman men, which some saw as a betrayal of Egypt's sovereignty. Overall, the degree to which Cleopatra was liked or loved by the people of Egypt is difficult to determine with certainty. It is likely that her popularity among different groups of Egyptians varied widely depending on their political and social affiliations, and the historical record is colored by bias and propaganda from both her supporters and her detractors. Was Egypt Aphrodite or Hermaphrodite's capital? Egypt was not the capital of either Aphrodite or Hermaphrodite, as those are Greek deities and Egypt has its own rich history and pantheon of gods and goddesses.
In ancient Egyptian mythology, the capital city was Memphis, which was the center of political and religious power during the Old Kingdom period. Later, during the New Kingdom period, the capital shifted to Thebes, modern-day Luxor, which became the center of Egypt's powerful empire. The ancient Egyptians worshipped a wide variety of gods and goddesses, including Ra, Osiris, Isis, Horus, and many others, each of whom held different roles and significance within the mythology and religious practices of ancient Egypt. Please subscribe and you will be part of the growth of my channel. Quirky Facts About Cleopatra Here are some quirky facts about Cleopatra. Cleopatra was known for her love of perfumes and would often douse herself in fragrances before meeting with important people. She was rumored to have invented a type of lipstick made from crushed beetles and ants, which was used to give her lips a bright red color. Cleopatra was also known for her love of luxury and would often bathe in milk to keep her skin soft and smooth. She was a skilled linguist and could speak at least nine different languages, including Egyptian, Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. Cleopatra was said to have a pet leopard named Arrow, which she would often take with her on hunting expeditions. She was known for her dramatic fashion sense and would often wear extravagant jewelry and intricate hairstyles. Cleopatra was also a prolific writer and poet, and is said to have authored several works of literature during her lifetime. She was a skilled mathematician and is credited with inventing a water clock, which used the flow of water to measure time. Cleopatra was the last pharaoh of ancient Egypt and her rule brought an end to the Ptolemaic dynasty, which had successfully governed Egypt for three centuries. She famously had relationships with both Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, and their love affairs have been the subject of countless books, plays, and movies over the years. Cleopatra's most famous question is what was in her bath water. One of the quirky facts about Cleopatra is that she was known to bathe in milk. According to ancient sources, Cleopatra would fill her bath with fresh donkey milk, which was believed to have skin-softening properties. It is said that she would also add honey and various essential oils to the milk bath to further enhance its benefits for her skin. However, it's worth noting that these accounts come from ancient sources and may not be entirely accurate. Nonetheless, Cleopatra's milk baths have become a popular legend and are often cited as an example of her luxurious lifestyle and beauty rituals. Did anybody during the time they knew Cleopatra personally wrote anything about her? Yes, several writers during Cleopatra's lifetime wrote about her. The Greek historian Plutarch, who lived in the 1st and 2nd centuries AD, wrote a biography of Antony in which he included many anecdotes about Cleopatra. Another Greek historian named Dio Cassius, who lived in the 3rd century AD, also wrote about Cleopatra and his histories of Rome. The Roman poet Horace wrote a famous poem about Cleopatra's defeat at the Battle of Actium in 31 BC. Additionally, Cleopatra herself was a prolific writer and scholar who wrote books on topics such as medicine, cosmetics, and alchemy, although none of her original works have survived to the present day. Overall, while much of what we know about Cleopatra today comes from later sources, there were many writers during her lifetime who wrote about her and her relationships with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. Plutarch, how he knew so much about Cleopatra. Plutarch did not personally know Cleopatra. He was born about 100 years after Cleopatra's death and never met her. However, Plutarch did have access to earlier historical accounts of Cleopatra's life and reign, as well as to other sources such as the memoirs of Cleopatra's contemporaries. Plutarch also traveled extensively throughout the Roman Empire and had access to libraries and archives where he could have researched Cleopatra's life and times. Based on these sources, Plutarch was able to write a detailed and vivid account of Cleopatra's life, which has been influential in shaping our understanding of her legacy. Did she practice and enjoyed alchemy and chemistry? Yes, Cleopatra was known to have a keen interest in alchemy and chemistry. In fact, she was known to have her own personal alchemist, a man named Sarsimus, who was said to have taught her the secrets of alchemy. Cleopatra was fascinated by the idea of turning base metals into gold and she was also interested in the medicinal properties of various substances. According to some ancient sources, Cleopatra even conducted her own experiments with alchemy and chemistry, and she was known to have written a number of treatises on these subjects. 
although none of her original works have survived to the present day. It's worth noting that in Cleopatra's time, alchemy was not seen as a separate discipline from chemistry. And many of the early alchemists were also interested in practical applications of their work, such as developing medicines and cosmetics. Was she a genius in the art of war? While Cleopatra is known for her political and diplomatic abilities, she was not necessarily considered a genius in the art of war. In fact, there is little evidence to suggest that she had any particular military training or expertise. Instead, Cleopatra relied on her intelligence, charisma, and tactical acumen to navigate the complex political landscape of the ancient world and secure her power. She was known for her shrewdness and her ability to form alliances with powerful figures, such as Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, which helped her to maintain her position as Queen of Egypt. However, it should be noted that Cleopatra did play an active role in some of the military campaigns of her time, and she was known to have personally led troops into battle on occasion. While she may not have been a military genius in the traditional sense, Cleopatra was a skilled and resourceful leader who was able to wield power effectively in a time of great upheaval and change. Was she an outstanding businesswoman especially in reference to King Herod? Cleopatra is not typically known for her business acumen, and there is little evidence to suggest that she was involved in significant business dealings during her reign. However, she did have a complex and often fraught relationship with King Herod of Judea, who was a powerful figure in the region during her time. Herod was known for his wealth and his business savvy, and he was often involved in commercial ventures such as trade and construction. At various points in their relationship, Cleopatra and Herod both sought to use each other for their own political and economic gain. For example, Herod was known to have borrowed money from Cleopatra's court to finance his building projects, and he also sought to secure her support in his efforts to expand his territory and influence. However, their relationship was also marked by conflict and mistrust, and they were known to have been bitter rivals at times. Overall, while Cleopatra may have had some limited involvement in business matters, she is not typically remembered as a prominent businesswoman, and her legacy is more closely tied to her political and cultural achievements. Cleopatra was a skilled diplomat and strategist who was able to navigate the complex political landscape of the ancient world and maintain her power in the face of significant challenges and threats. She was also a patron of the arts and sciences, and she is remembered for her support of scholarship and culture in Egypt. While her relationship with King Herod was certainly a significant aspect of her reign, it is not typically viewed as a defining characteristic of her legacy. Instead, Cleopatra is remembered as a powerful and influential figure who left a lasting mark on history. Why did Cleopatra have so many coins printed with her likeness? Cleopatra had many coins printed with her likeness for a variety of reasons. One of the primary reasons was to establish her legitimacy as a ruler and to reinforce her authority over her subjects. Coins were an important form of currency in the ancient world, and they were often used to spread political messages and propaganda. By placing her image on coins, Cleopatra was able to promote her image as a powerful and legitimate ruler and to reinforce her authority over her subjects. Another reason why Cleopatra had so many coins printed with her likeness was to promote her political agenda and to advance her interests. Coins were a powerful tool for disseminating information and propaganda, and Cleopatra was known to have used them to promote her alliances, to assert her authority over her territories, and to advance her political goals. For example, she minted coins that depicted her in the guise of the goddess Isis, which helped to reinforce her status as a divine ruler and to promote her image as a powerful and influential figure. Overall, the use of coins to promote her image and political agenda was a common practice among ancient rulers, and Cleopatra was no exception. By using coins to spread her image and message, she was able to establish her legitimacy and authority, promote her political goals, and leave a lasting impression on history. Today, the coins that bear her image are highly valued by collectors and historians alike, as they provide a glimpse into the life and legacy of one of the most powerful and influential women in history. Was Cleopatra overweight and did she have a bigger than normal gluteus maximus? There is no definitive evidence that suggests Cleopatra was overweight or had a larger than normal gluteus maximus. In fact, most depictions of Cleopatra from the time period show her as being slim and graceful, with delicate features. While it is true that in some later depictions of her, particularly during the Renaissance period, she is depicted as having a fuller figure. 
It is important to note that these depictions are not necessarily accurate or based on historical fact. Furthermore, ancient Egyptians placed a great deal of importance on physical beauty and personal grooming, and it is unlikely that someone in Cleopatra's position would have neglected her appearance. Additionally, the fact that she was known for her intelligence, political savvy, and charm suggests that her physical appearance was not the primary focus of her power or influence. In any case, it is important to approach historical figures with respect and sensitivity, and to avoid making unfounded assumptions about their appearance or physical characteristics. In those days a large gluteus maximus was considered a gift from the goddess Aphrodite in Greek culture. While it is true that the ancient Greeks placed a great deal of importance on physical beauty and athleticism, including a well-shaped body, there is no concrete evidence to suggest that a large gluteus maximus was considered a gift from the goddess Aphrodite in Greek culture. In fact, the ideal body type for men and women in ancient Greece was quite different from modern beauty standards, with a greater emphasis on balance, symmetry, and proportion rather than specific features such as a large gluteus maximus. It is also important to remember that Cleopatra was not Greek, but rather an Egyptian queen who lived during the Hellenistic period, when Egypt was heavily influenced by Greek culture. While it is possible that some aspects of Greek beauty ideas may have influenced Egyptian culture during this time, it is unlikely that a large gluteus maximus would have been specifically associated with the goddess Aphrodite in Egyptian culture. In general, it is important to approach historical and cultural topics with an open mind and a willingness to learn, rather than relying on assumptions or stereotypes. While her story may forever remain shrouded in mystery, one thing is certain, Cleopatra's legacy continues to captivate and fascinate us, leaving us to ponder whether she was truly a master manipulator or simply a misunderstood queen. Please subscribe and you will be part of the growth of my channel.